I think morality has become a big topic today because in recent decades we haven't really brought moral questions into the heart of public discourse. We've lived through a period of, of, of faith in markets, a faith that markets by themselves could not only produce prosperity and affluence, but that markets could define justice and the good life. I think that faith is in question now. I think that's why we're seeing such uh, an eagerness to debate questions of justice and morality. With growing economic prosperity has come a rising gap between rich and poor, and that raises moral questions. But also there's been, a, I think, an erosion of the, the moral and social ties that hold us together in families and in, in society. The erosion of those bonds, I think, also has produced a growing questioning about morality and about the meaning of a good society, and I think that's a healthy thing. Today there are very few things that money can't buy, but money still today can't buy love, can't buy friendship, can't buy the warmth and the meaning of family relations. Uh, these provide us an anchor in the world, a fundamental source of, of support for the rest of our lives. So love, friendship, family, these are things that even today money can't buy which doesn't mean that money doesn't try to buy these things and a great many other of the aspects of the good life. There's no simple answer to the question, what is justice today? But I'm struck by the fact that around the world, and especially in Korea, there's a growing concern with fairness. One of the effects of recent decades is that along with economic growth and rising prosperity and affluence, has come a growing gap between rich and poor. And so I think that especially in Korea, and I admire this very much, people are asking, what is a fair society? What is a just society? And is it compatible with a vast difference in income and wealth between the rich and the poor? My advice for Korean young people, well, there are two kinds of advice I'm tempted to give. One would be traditional advice, to work hard and study hard the best that you can. But in some ways I feel that a second piece of advice is at least equally important. And that is, as you go about your studies, work as hard as you can, but also take the time to step back from the pressures associated with the educational system in all of our societies, but I know especially in Korea. See if you can step back from those pressures, the pressures to do well on exams, and to think for yourself and with your friends about big questions that matter, questions about what gives meaning to life, philosophical questions about what makes for a good society, what does a virtuous life consist in? What does it mean to be a good citizen in a democratic society? What broader purposes do you hope to achieve with your life? How can you contribute to the common good, to making the world a better place? These are broader reflective questions than the ones that are tested on, on the exams. And yet, these are the questions in the forms of reflection that lead to, to a good and a reflective life. So I know that there is intense competition these days for admission to the top universities and for jobs in the best companies. But my strongest piece of advice to Korean students would be take time to reflect, to think broadly, to read not only what you need for the test and the exam, but also the thinking and reading that will help you reflect on the meaning and purpose of your life and on questions of how you can contribute to making this world a better place. That would be my, my strongest and most heartfelt piece of advice.